DC Nation, what is up? We're back with another video, and today I'm gonna give my thoughts on all the new DC Comics that came out this past Tuesday, September 14th, 2021. Now guys, this was actually a very interesting week in terms of DC Comics. It was very Batman-centric. Honestly, DC is just fully Batman-centric at this point. But, we have Batman The World, one of the biggest comics of the week, which has like, 14 different creative teams from all around the world, from different countries. I'm excited to talk about that comic. It's actually a whole graphic novel. Now, we have that. We also got a new issue of James Tynion's Joker. We got Batman Beyond. He's back. We got the Damian Wayne Batman from that dark future that Graham Morrison made. We also got Batman 1 million. So yeah, all those are just like a tiny bit of the Batman content we get this week in terms of comics. Now guys, the first comic I'm going to talk about is Batman Urban Legends number 7. The reason why I'm wearing this Batman Beyond t-shirt is because we got a new Batman Beyond story. And guys, I actually really enjoyed this. This was actually a really good story. Now, what this story is about is, okay, it's set in Neo Gotham in the future. We got Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond. He makes it back to the Batcave and he finds Bruce dying. And Bruce is at like his final words. He's about to die in like seconds. And Terry goes up to him. Terry's like, I can save you. And Bruce's like, no, you can't save me. And then Bruce passes on the mantle, like officially. Like, yeah, we have Bruce. He's been in Terry's ear this entire time, helping him out. But this is the moment that Bruce is going to be gone. And Terry has to work alone. At least until he finds someone to help him out. Or like join him in his crusade. But... We have Bruce, he tells Terry that the Batman's legacy is all about fear, not justice. And it should be about justice. And Bruce says this line, he's like, Terry, you have to go beyond. You have to bring justice to Gotham. You have to do what I couldn't. And Bruce brings up this thing that, okay, in that alley, when his parents died and he swore this oath about a war on crime, you know, you guys know the whole story, you know. Bruce's parents get shot. He's like, I'm gonna do this whole war on crime and make sure no one else goes through what I went through. But Bruce brings up the saying that, okay, when he saw his parents die and when his father was falling to his death to the ground after being shot, Thomas saw his son, Bruce, and he saw the Batman and he saw only fear. Now, this part I wasn't a big fan of because I'm like, there's no way Thomas got shot and his final thoughts was, oh my god, my son is going to become the Batman. I don't know why I know this, but I just see it. And all, all, all I see is fear. I don't like that. Also, Martha, it said, like, okay, Martha, she regretted everything. And kind of, she wasn't in a good mood. Like, she died regretting things and wish she did better. Which, I'm like, no. I, I feel like my whole interpretation is Thomas and Martha, they were doing good. They were trying to save Gotham, and they got gunned down one night. But aside from that, all of Bruce's, like, dialogue is pretty good, actually. Like, the writing is top-notch, and there's one part where Bruce is like, I was vengeance, I was the knight, but you are Batman. And I, I got chills. I was like, that's so dope. And you see Terry, there's a couple twisted turns throughout the story, as Terry tries to find Bruce's killer, and Terry just owns it. Like, he's Batman. And guys, the artwork done in this story is really cool. We get some cool splash images. We get some cool double page spreads showing like Terry like flying through Neo Gotham. We also have like a double page spread where we see Terry. He goes up against all different kinds of villains like Shriek, the Jokers, all sorts of stuff. Like if you're a fan of the Batman Beyond TV series, the anime show, or the Bound Beyond comics, then you'll really like this. Like, there's a lot of nostalgia here, but it, there's also a good story. And at the end of the story, it sets up Batman Beyond Neo Year, this storyline coming out next year. And I'm excited for it. Like, this story got me hyped. It did what it had to do. Yes, it set up a great story coming up. I hope it's going to be a great story, at least one that we're hyped about, but... It also gave a solid 30-page standalone story in this Batman Urban Legends comic. So yeah, I enjoyed it, guys. So if you're going to pick up this issue, this one, I would say it was the best of all the four in this issue, but 
It was pretty up there. I thought it was pretty good. Now, the next story in this issue is called The Executive Game. And it's written by Tim Seeley, art by Juan Ferreira. Now, what the story is, is it's based in the future. That is a demonic Gotham City. You know, the one from Batman, uh, issue number 666. Written by Grant Morrison, art by Andy Kubert. It's the one where Damian Wayne, he's Batman. He got some supernatural powers, but he's dealing with a lot of demonic stuff. Like, it's pretty dark. But what this story, the executive game, is all about is you see he gets to his tower and he tries to get to the top of it and find the executive. This person, this trippy individual. Like, I kind of didn't understand the full thing of it by the end. It was pretty trippy, but I'm pretty sure that's the point. Like, I liked it. It was pretty cool. But my little analogy with this is basically the story is Batman mixed with the raid. Now, if you don't know what the raid is, it's this two movie, um, well, it's two movies. It's the raid and the raid two. And all it's about is this guy, he tries to get to the top of this tower, but he has to fight off against all these people to get there. So it's nonstop action. It's one of my favorite movies, guys, because I like fighting movies. Like, fighting movies, it's just my thing. Like, if there's a fight movie coming out, it's my most anticipated movie, for sure. But here we go. We got Batman, Damian Wayne. He's going up this tower. He's fighting against all these different villains. And I gotta say, the designs by Juan Ferreira in this story are amazing. Like, there's a couple of them that I'm like, dang, like, I just stare down. Like, this is cool. And how Damian Wayne takes down all these different villains it's really cool. Like, it makes Damian Wayne just awesome. Now, by the end of the story, like I said, there's kind of like a jarring shift. Like, he meets up with the executive, and then he says, I want to make a deal. And there's some dialogue that hints at something coming, but then it shifts to an ending. That the ending is pretty cool. I like it. But it's kind of jarring. Like, it's a big switch. But I think that's the point. Like, after reading this a couple times, I started understanding a little more. And I started liking it a lot more. So yeah, this is one of my favorite stories in the entire issue. I would maybe, yeah, I'd put this above the Bam Beyond one. Like, the Bam Beyond one was cool, but this was just on another level. Like, the writing was a tad better. There's, like, no bad things about the story. Like, nothing that when I was reading was like, eh, I don't know about that. No, everything actually landed. So yeah, good story. Let's move on to the next. Next up, we got a story that takes place in the future states, and it's all about Cassandra Cain. We see Cassandra Cain, she's on the run and from the magistrates, and basically this entire story, you don't need dialogue for. Yeah, there is dialogue, but if you took out all the dialogue in this story, you got really great artwork to look at, and good sequences, and a lot of good action. Now, the coloring could be a little better, because at times... The colors kind of don't mesh well, and it makes it hard to determine, like, what's going on. But once you do actually analyze it and figure out what's going on with the story, it's actually really cool. It's a simple story. It's just Cassandra K on the run, but I like how it's executed. Now, by the end of the story, she obviously meets up with Batman, and they go off to, you know, take down the magistrate. Like, they go off to do more crime fighting. Now, overall, the story, very simple. I would say the weakest out of all the four stories in this issue, just because it didn't offer anything big. Like, it was like a story that, oh man, I'm gonna come back and read this. No, it's just a fun story that is good to read like once or twice. Now, next up, we got Batman 1 million. He is back. Set in the 853rd century in the world, the DC 1 million. It, guys, DC 1 million is just a great story. Like, the Superman DC 1 million is super powerful. And all the different other characters are cool, too. And it's one of my favorite stories that DC has released. I do think that's a little underrated. Not a lot of people talk about it. But if you ever get the chance to, like, get a copy, and you're able to get a part of the story or just the full DC 1 million story, get that. Or at least read it digitally if you can't find it. But read the story, all right? But guys, this story, we have Batman, he's a warden on a prison planet called Pluto, and we see this extended action sequence where he takes down multiple villains. So we see these group of villains, it starts out like that, and they're just trying to escape. And the villain that stood out to me is this guy named Hades. 
He's the descendant of Bane, and he's the son of Vandal Savage. Guys, mixing Bane and Vandal Savage, that's a cool idea. Now, Hades does get his ass whooped by Batman, but that's besides the point. Throughout this story, we see Batman team up with uh, Robin, the Toy Wonder, which, guys, the Robin in this story is just so awesome. Like, it's very cool. He's basically a toy. Like, he's called the Toy Wonder, and he does some cool things. There's actually an image at the end where you see Batman and Robin jumping out, and it's my favorite image in the entire story. Now, a couple other things I want to know about the story has amazing artwork that fits the tone and fits the story, but also through Batman trying to chase down these villains, he changes into different costumes. And the two noble ones that I want to talk about is first off the Batman Nightfall costume. He changes into it to fight off against Hades, you know, the guy who's the descendant of Bane, makes sense, and it's super dope. Now, Batman also goes up against, like, this mind-bending villain. I forgot his name. Wasn't very memorable. But Batman turns into the Batman of Zurinar. I hope I pronounced that right. It's very hard to pronounce. But it's a very cool uh, design. And the story that this design, uh, Zurinar, comes from is not a Macy story. It's like a Silver Age story. But the costume is just so cool. And it looks great here. So yeah, guys, check out the story. I highly recommend it. It was my favorite one in this bunch. For me, I rank it like this. This story, Batman 1 million. Then we got the Damian Wayne one. And then I put Batman Beyond and then the Cassandra Kane one. So yeah, overall, Batman Urban Legends number 7. Definitely a pickup. You should get at your local comic shop. Now, next up on this list of comics for this week, we got Batman 89. Number two. This comic, I'm kind of mixed on. Like, the very first issue, I really liked. This follow-up, there's not a lot of plot progression. And it is becoming more like a Two-Face story than a Batman story. Like, Michael Keaton's Batman is barely in this issue. Yes, he has some cool character development at times, but it doesn't feel like the Batman from the Tim Burton universe. It's kind of like, okay, he's being Bruce Wayne, he's trying to fund some things, help out Harvey Dent, which that's cool, but there's not a lot of Batman action. The most Batman action we get is actually the beginning. Like, this issue starts out great. Like, Batman fails to save someone, he messes up, and we see in the morning, Alfred goes to wake him up, and he's not there. He's in the Batcave, and Alfred finds Batman just kind of looking down like he failed. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a good issue. Like, if this is how it starts, it's going to get better. And it doesn't really. Like, it kind of slows down to a crawl and kind of becomes like a slot to read. Now, the thing that did help me get through this issue is the artwork. Like, the artwork fits the tone. It actually fits the Tim Burton universe. And the art just looks amazing. Like, it looks really good. And guys, Harvey Dent, he's the main character of the story. How is he treated? He's actually treated very well. I am actually liking how he's progressing. He's the only character in the story that's really getting a full character arc right now, or at least a notable character arc. And the ending suggests some interesting things to happen in the next issue. Now, we also have another character from the Tim Burton movies that shows up in this issue, Catwoman. And her appearance doesn't feel like, oh, she was really needed for the story. It was more like, yeah, she was in the movies, gotta put her in. So I, I was a big fan of that. I didn't feel like she was actually essential. Like, okay, she actually adds a lot to the story. It's more like, mm, we're making a Batman 89 series. We need Catwoman in there. So I didn't really enjoy that. But yeah, guys, overall, this issue, very mixed on it. I still like it. It's still decent. And I will pick up the next issue and probably cover it on this channel. But... I'm not as excited as I was in issue number one. Now, next up, we got Future State Gotham. And this issue, I thought, was solid. It was pretty good. There's a couple things that I kind of weighed it down, but I'll be the first to talk about the positives. Now, positive things. The artwork looks great. I really liked it. Now, we also get, like, a lot of action. Like, we see the next Batman, Chase Fox, team up with Red Hood against the Warmonger. And we finally see the warmonger in, like, full action. Like, he is unleashed. 
and he's all right. Yeah, that's the problem with this issue for me. Seeing the Warmonger, I got kind of hyped. They were really suggesting it, like they built it up in this issue. And we actually got some explanation from um, Astrid. Yeah, Astrid Arkham. You know, the Arkham Knights. She explains how what happened to him, how he became, how he is now. And it's a good backstory, but him himself, I wish he got more spotlight. Like, they did good build-up. And when Batman and Red Hood finally got released, I was like, oh, we're getting action sequence. We're gonna get these two vigilantes against the Warmonger. It's gonna be dope. No, we kind of just get, like, Red Hood being like, oh, I get the magistrates, some backup, they come in, deal with the situation, and that's it. And I was like, really? I want more payoff. But still, I'm... I still enjoy what we got, but I wish we had more. The ending of the issue, though, does suggest some cool things coming next issue with Red Hood basically arresting Batman. And Nightwing and all the other Bat family see this and they're like, what the heck? So it's a good ending. It sets up some cool storylines to come. And yeah, I'm excited. Now, the next uh, comic on our list is I Am Batman number one. Now, this issue is written by John Ridley. And it's all about Jace Fox, the next Batman. And guys, I'm going to flat out say it. The artwork in this issue is the best artwork on the stands this week. It looks that good. Like Oliver Corpoil, I hope I pronounced that last name right. Probably didn't, but whatever. His artwork is amazing. It really makes or breaks this issue. Like the story in this issue is all right. It's good. I haven't been invested in Jace Fox's Batman as much recently. Like, I liked him in Future States. The Future State Next Batman series was great. But when we had the Second Son series, that kind of lost my interest. Like, I didn't really like that series. It kind of drags. We didn't really see Jace Fox become Batman that much. It was more about the Fox family, and that's good sometimes, but when they drag it on so long, it gets very boring. But now, this new series looks like it's actually going to be dealing with Batman. Like, Jace is actually suing up. He gets an all-new costume that looks dope. And there's actually one sequence where he's fighting off against some uh, criminals. And he whips out some scrim sticks. And I flat out said, like, when I was reading this issue, I was like, oh yeah, let's go. Like, that got me hyped. Because up to that part, I was like, okay, the story's pretty decent. It's just, you know... Batman against the magistrate and we got a couple cops that are supporting characters that work with the story and it's interesting but when I got to that action sequence and that kind of like a splash image that's when I was on board with the series and the ending actually gets me more excited for the next issue because it shows anarchy and anarchy is messed up so now I'm like wondering who messed up anarchy who almost killed him and where will the story go so yeah guys if you've been not invested in Jace Fox, uh, the next Batman, this issue will get you invested again. It will get you back on board. I just hope they keep it up because I've been hearing the insolications that basically the art for this issue is not coming back for issue number two. And they're just going to be like switching out artists. I hope not because the art really made me get invested with the story. It made me be like, okay. This is a great story and could lead to very good things. But if next issue they switch up the art is and maybe the story starts to struggle, then I may lose interest. But for now, I'm on board. Now guys, the next comic on our list is The Joker number 7. Written by James Tyen, art by Julian March. And this issue kind of lost me. I wasn't really that invested. It started out good. Like the opening sequence, we see Julia Pennyworth working with Barbara Gordon, aka Oracle. Like she shows up at like Santa Prisca and we have a cool action sequence. And the art is actually the best here. Like this issue starts out great. But then we shift to Gordon and we have a lot of like long winded scenes with a lot of narration. Like walls of walls of text. Like James Tyne needs to cut back on that. Like, that's really his fault. Like, that's his problem. I like his writing. He can make some great stories. But the thing that takes me out of his stories is all the walls of text he puts in them. Like, sometimes he could just 
narrow it down to one sentence to really get the story going, but instead he makes like a whole paragraph about that one sentence. And I'm like, no, you, you didn't need to do that. Like it was fine how it was. But guys, aside from that, the issue progresses and we also get like an action sequence between Cassandra came back girl and Talon and how it sounded, okay, how I'm sounding right now is what you need to know. Basically, it sounds cool, right? Batgirl versus the Talon, but how the art depicts it and how the action sequence carries through, it's very disappointing, and I wish it was better. I wish it was kind of like, okay, you guys remember when the Court of Owls debuted in Scott Snyder's Batman run, and we had Batman go against the Talon, the Talon beat the crap out of him, almost killed him in the labyrinth, that was cool. I thought that was going to be the same thing here, but like reverse roles. Now Cassandra came back, girl, is beating up the talent. But instead, we don't get that. We get an action sequence that is very poorly done. Now, at the end of the issue, we do have like a cliffhanger with like Lady Bane showing up. And that's cool and all, but next issue really needs to up it. Like, get Joker involved again. Like, okay, the idea of making like a Gordon book... Or making a Joker book disguised as a Gordon book is good. I really like Gordon going on this adventure. But you still gotta have Joker. Like, Joker is like a panel in this issue. And it's not in present day. It's just Gordon talking about, like, a past events. And I'm like, really? I want to see Joker in action. So hopefully next issue we see more Joker and more of the story getting to a good level where I'm interested. Not just... A bunch of text that means nothing. So yeah, guys, if you've been reading this Joker series, this issue may be skippable. I, I would skip it. Come back next issue and see if it gets better. But I don't know, guys. I'm just not invested in the series as I was at the beginning. Now, the next comic on our list is Justice League, The Last Ride, number five. Written by Chip Sadarcy. This issue was dope. Like, I've been really enjoying the series. It's been very epic. We've been getting a lot of revelations. And the story is just hitting a lot of high stakes. And guys, the artwork in this issue is well done. It fits the tone. And the action looks phenomenal. And yeah, that's really all I gotta say about it. Like, the story progresses in a good way. We see a lot in the past and the present. And how the issue ends with Darkseid getting the power of the Green Lancer and Battery. Like, bro, that's going to be so cool next issue. We got two issues left in the series. And yeah, it's building to a really good point that I'm excited for. So yeah, Chip Sadarcy, keep up the great work. I'm excited for the next issue. Speaking of the Justice League, we got Justice League number 67, written by Brian Michael Bendis for the main story. And we got Ram V on the Justice League Dark backup story. For the main story, uh, I'm not really enjoying it. Like, guys, I have not been covering this Just League Mate series for a while, and there's a reason for it. I'm not really enjoying it. Now, there are a couple cool sequences in here, like when Superman stands up against the United... I, I forgot what they're called. They're like a group of characters that Ben just created for this run. That These characters are not interesting at all. I'm not invested in them. But there is a scene that's actually pretty cool where Superman is like standing up against them and all the other heroes back up Superman like Black Canary, Flash. They're like, you're gonna go through him. You gotta go through us too. I'm like, okay, that's that. That's pretty good. Now that the issue ends, we see checkmates. They're going after this one guy who, I forgot who this guy was. I really, it's probably a character that's simple. You probably could be like in the comments section. Uh, Ethan, you, you know this character, like, you've been reading the story. Like, I probably do, but I did not care about him in this issue. I did not. But seeing a bunch of death strokes at the end of the issue does give me a treat. But then they said Checkmates, and I'm like, oh, that's the Checkmates series. The Checkmates and Leviathan, I, I don't care about that. So yeah, this whole run is just Bendis putting his ideas from other stories into a Just League run. Like, you literally got Sinmar in this issue, who sucks. I, I don't like Sinmar. You also got Naomi, which Naomi, okay. I don't hate her. Like, she's a fine character, but I feel like she's being shoved into stories like this. She's just being put in there just to be there. But guys, enough of me ranting about this main story. Let's talk about the backup. Written by Ram V, we got the Just League Dark. They're in Atlantis. They're fighting against Merlin. And it's awesome. The artwork looks really good. 
and I enjoyed it. Just the problem is, this backup story is so short. Like, we get only 10 pages every month, and I'm always wanting more, but I kind of wish the Just Sleep Dark got, like, their own series. Like, it doesn't make sense for a really good backup story to be put with a very mediocre main story. Like, imagine you're picking this up at the comic shop. You're like, okay, I got paid the money, the extra money for a main story I don't want to read, but I want these 10 pages. I want to know what comes next. It's kind of just a cash grab. It's like they're just trying to be like, oh, instead of giving you a justly dark main series that you could just get and enjoy, and you know your money is spent well, you got to waste part of your money on a story that's not that good, and part of the money goes to actually being well worth it in the backup story. So yeah, I don't like how they're doing this. Like, just give the Justly Dark their main story so we could get actually a solid 20 pages every month. But yeah, guys, I did like the backup story. Backup story, really cool. If you've been liking it, this won't change your opinion. It's an awesome story, and I'm excited to see where it goes. But yeah, guys, next up on our list, we got Titans United number one. Now, this issue has the lineup of the Titans from the HBO Max series, Titans, which is having its third season going on right now, which is actually a really good season. Titans is at its best right now. So we have this new series that is actually really good. I really enjoyed this. I was kind of worried about it because I was like, eh, comics that go along with a TV show sometimes can be like fill-in, like they just kind of phone in. But no, they actually have good writers on it, amazing artwork, and I liked it. Like, the story progresses pretty well. It's a pretty simple story. Easy to understand. Great dialogue. Actually, the, the dialogue, I thought, would annoy me. Because it's kind of like self-aware dialogue. This part where, like, Beast Boy turns into a horse. And he's trying to evacuate the assistants. And one of the other times is like, what are you doing? And Beast Boy's like, I'm horsey around. So usually I'd be like, okay, that's kind of dumb. But I like it here because it's Beast Boy. He's the comedy relief. And there's other dialogue like that that fits with the characters, and it works. It somehow works, and I really like that. Now, the end of the issue got me hyped. Okay, we see a lot of, like, big moments, and actually Superboy, Connor Kent, he gets messed up. Like, he actually loses his powers, and he kind of has, like, a back and forth with Jason and Red Hood that I really liked. But at the end of the issue, we see Hawk and Dove getting beat up by Kite Man. Kite Man has new powers, and he is super powerful, and I'm excited to see where that goes. Like, Kite Man being here, Kite Man has become one of my favorite characters in recent years, just because, like, actually, Tom King did a great job with him, and he was cool in the Harley Quinn anime series, and you see him here just in a Titans book, it's odd, but it's really cool. So yeah, guys, I definitely recommend you guys check this out. If you're kind of worried about it, and you're like, oh, I don't want to pick up another Titans book that doesn't meet expectations. Don't worry, this issue meets expectations. Actually, no, it doesn't meet expectations. I thought it'd be weak. It actually exceeds expectations. It's really good. Check it out. Now to my favorite comic book of the week, Batman The Worlds. It's a graphic novel or a full-on book, I could say. And it has 14 different stories written by 14 different creative teams from different countries around the world. Like, that's a cool idea. Going into this book, I got, I was excited. I was like, okay, I can see different perspectives of Batman in different cultures. Like, that's, that's really cool. Now, the stories in here are actually very mixed. Like, there's some that are, like, masterpiece level. Others that are just decent. But no story was terrible. I actually enjoyed them all. The first story, we got, like, Brian Azzarello and Lee Bermejo. It's basically just introducing the idea of Batman expanding to the world. And it's a good opener. Like, it gets you invested. And the artwork, obviously, is top tier. Like, Lee Bermejo is amazing artwork. One of my favorite artists in DC Comics. But as it goes on, you see different Batman stories from all around the world. And you have, like, a Catwoman one that's really good. You have one that's very haunting, actually. Yeah, I think it was, uh, which one was it? I think it was the Mexico one, where it's called, like, a funeral, and Batman, like, tries to help out this woman. It's a very dark story, guys. Very dark. But there are also stories that are, like, hard, too. 
like the Russia one. There's one that is from Russia. It's about this guy basically going through his life having this idol that's Batman. Like, he always wants to meet him, and he basically illustrates Batman throughout his life, and eventually he does meet Batman, and Batman lives up to his expectations. And the guy smiles. And you see the story ends with another girl going on to illustrate a hero. And that hero being Wonder Woman. So yeah, I like it. It's, it's good writing. Now we also got like a story from Japan that's really good. It's manga style, which I always enjoy. Like how it's drawn, like Batman be a samurai. That's super dope. And yeah, there's other ones so, like the Joker. You have Batman just in different perspective. Like it's cool, guys. Like if you want some interesting stories and a book that'll take your time, it'll be worth it. Like guys, there's 14 stories in here. So it's gonna take you a while to read, but it's worth it. Like even stories that you're just like, ah, it's just kind of decent, like it was amazing, you can see the work that's put into it. Like there's one story that takes place in Spain and it just shows Batman living kind of like an off day like he's just enjoying himself he's being bruce wayne but not like okay he's helping out wayne enterprises no he's taking off day and there's one like awesome image that the artist of the story interpreted pretty well like he illustrates it greatly you see batman like jump into the city and spain behind him and it looks so cool like guys how all the different countries are illustrated and shown in this book, Batman the World, is pretty remarkable. Like, it's really cool. So yeah, guys, highly recommend this. Check this book out. And yeah, that's all the new comic books that I read this week, the DC Comics. But I'm not going to end the video yet. I'm going to do a thing I call Back Hall Pull. And what this is basically is I went through all my physical comic books that I have. And I chose one comic that I want to give a shout out to. I want to talk about it a little bit, kind of give you like a pitch to go check it out. And for this week, we got Batman Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader. This story is written by Neil Gaiman, arts by Andy Kubert. And this is actually the hardcover edition. I was at my little comic book shop going through different comics. And I'm like, okay, what should I choose? I was on a budget, so I was like, I can't buy everything. I wish. I wish I could buy everything at a comic book shop. All the comics. Every DC comic there. Like, they have good stuff. But this comic, I saw it, I was like, that's a buy. Like, a me a buy. And the reason it's a me a buy is it's so well crafted. This story, the arts, is amazing. It's really good. You get a lot of double page spreads and cool images of Batman. A different perspective on Batman. The whole point of the story is to welcome Batman into like a modern age. Like the final few images in this story is trippy. It really hits you. And it's cool. Like I really like it. Now what the story is about is you see Batman. He wakes up kind of like a dream like states. And he goes to a funeral. And we find out the funeral is for him. Batman is dead. And at this funeral you got... All his rogues, the full Bat family. You got all the characters you know in Batman mythology, basically. And they all go up to the stand and they tell their stories of how Batman died. You got one about Catwoman. You got one about Alfred, which, guys, Alfred's story is trippy and awesome. Like, it's a twist there that's just so cool. I'm not going to spoil it. You got to read it yourself. But still... It's really cool. You got Robin, Mad Hatter, Joker, Batgirl. They all tell their stories. And eventually Batman's like, okay, what's the point of this? And he meets up with an unknown figure that's been talking to Bruce this entire story. And I'm not going to spoil the twist, but that unknown figure is so cool. Like it's, It brings it full circle. And it hits you. It's just such a well-written story that has amazing artwork. Like, you can't miss out on this. This is one of the best Batman stories of all time. I highly recommend it. Like, if you're at the little comic book shop and you see this and you walk out without it, like, what are you doing? Like, you're missing out. You're really missing out. So, yeah, Batman, whatever happened to the Cape Crusader, check it out, guys. At least read it digitally. Like, read the story and go find it at a comic book shop. I'm just happy I have this. It's a hardcover edition. 
and it's well like it's well made it's actually i treat it properly i haven't like messed it up don't worry i keep my comics in good condition and yeah that's gonna be the back haul pull for this week but yeah that's gonna close out this video guys tell me your thoughts on all the new dc comics that came out this week what was your favorite one what was your least favorite what do you think about batman the world and what do you think about the back haul pull that i picked for this video Batman, whatever happens, the Cape Crusader. I really want to hear all you guys' thoughts down below. Also, give me your thoughts on this type of video. Instead of comic narrations on every single comic that comes out every week, you guys get this video where I give my straight thoughts on all the new comics. And I also throw in a couple cool things here and there. But yeah, there'll still be comic narrations once in a while when I get time. But I've just been so busy lately, and DC has been cranking out like the big comics. Like, think about it, guys. If I would try to tackle Batman the World and do 14 different videos on 14 different stories, I would never got those videos out. Where here, you guys get my straight thoughts on it, and yeah, I hope you enjoy. But yeah, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. You should make sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next new comic book day reviews. Alright? But yeah, guys. Thanks for watching, and peace out.